phenylketonuria, or PKU abbreviated, as a topic. And uh, basically, this is an autosomal recessive uh, disease that can occur. And what happens is you have an amino acid named phenylalanine, and this is an amino acid, which are the building blocks of, building blocks of proteins. And this uh, phenylalanine is broken down into tyrosine via an enzyme known as phenylalanine hydroxylase. And the uh, disease PKU is basically a dis deficiency uh, of this enzyme. Phenylalanine hydroxylase is deficient. So what happens if when this is not able to convert, the levels of tyrosine will be low and the levels of phenylalanine will be very high. Now, phenylalanine, when it has very high levels, can develop a very high level of breakdown products or metabolites, and one of them is phenylketones. And those phenylketones are excreted in the urine, and that is what is the reason that it's called PKU, phenylketonuria. So that's where the name come from, comes from. Now, one of the metabolites is known as phenylacetic acid. And phenylacetic acid is responsible for basically creating a very specific odor in the child, which is classically called a musty or a mousy odor. And that's uh, commonly tested on clinical vignettes. So when you have an excess amount of phenylalanine, unfortunately what can happen, it can start to accumulate in the brain, and that can lead to the symptomatology. So what are the symptoms? Well, they're usually normal at birth, but they can then start to develop intellectual disability, severe intellectual disability, um, mental retardation, and um, this brain damage basically can also lead to seizures and the child can also present with gait disturbance. How do you diagnose this? Well basically what you do is you measure the phenylalanine levels and the phenylalanine levels are measured uh, right after birth about 24 hours and then again at 48 hours and that bit can basically help determine, along with the symptoms, the diagnosis. Now one thing I wanted to mention that's very important is the prognosis. If you have a mother, a woman that's pregnant with PKU, it's very important that she control her phenylalanine levels because if she doesn't, these levels or this amino acid can cross the placenta and when it does, the excess level of phenylalanine can be teratogenic to the fetus and that can cause some severe um, consequences. One of them is microcephaly, also known as small brain, and the other one is mental retardation. So it's very important that a woman who is pregnant and has PKU um, manage her diet very closely so that the phenylalanine levels are not too high. So then how do you treat? What is the treatment for this? Well, it involves dietary management, dietary phenylalanine restriction, basically. And when you say restrict phenylalanine, what do you mean? Basically involves low-protein diet. And there's also special uh, phenylalanine free mixtures that you can buy um, that phenylalanine patients will commonly be uh, using as part of their diet. And then you also need to continually monitor the phenylalanine levels. And then, because tyrosine levels are low, you need to give tyrosine supplementation as well. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes, see what this looks like. A newborn infant is noted to have microcephaly after birth. Her mother is 38 years old. 
She also has a five-year-old son who is mentally retarded, and she had one previous second trimester miscarriage. In addition, she has a genetic disease that required a, a special diet, but she could discontinue the diet many years ago. On physical exam, the infant's weight and length are below the 10th percentile for his gestational age. He is also noted to have a grade 3 systolic ejection murmur, best heard at the lower left sternal border. Well, this is a perfect uh, scenario of a mother with PKU who didn't control her uh, phenylalanine levels. The phenylalanine levels then crossed the placenta and became teratogenic to the fetus. And as a result, the newborn had microcephaly. So, PKU. And then finally, a 20-year-old female who is two months pregnant remembers that she had PKU as a child and required a special diet. Tests confirm markedly elevated maternal serum levels of phenylalanine and phenylacetic acid. Genetic studies have not been performed on the father. What should the physician tell the parents regarding the welfare of the child? Well, let's go through these. Now, choice A, childhood phenylalanine restriction is sufficient to protect the health of her child. Uh, that is true, but you also, well, choice A, also need to protect the fetus. So, and that is done by restricting the phenylalanine levels of the mother during the pregnancy. So that's not complete advice. So it's not a B. Further information is required to ascertain if the fetus is, is at risk. Well, the fetus is definitely at risk. The mother has PKU. So I don't think you need any further information. Choice C. The fetus is at no health risk if it is heterozygous for the PKU gene. Uh, that's actually not true. Even if the uh, fetus is heterozygous, the fetus will not be able to break down the excess phenylalanine levels um, that the mother will uh, transmit to the fetus via the placenta. So that's not true. Choice D, the fetus is at no risk if phenylalanine levels are normalized by the third trimester. Uh, that's not true. Most of the damage, the teratogenic damage, occurs in the growing organs before the second month. So. By process of elimination, it's E, but E makes perfect sense. The mother's hyperphenylalaninemia, high levels of phenylalanine in the blood, may have already harmed the fetus, which is true, because the phenylalanine is an amino acid in excess levels. It crosses the placenta, and it causes teratogenic effects on the fetus.